Paul, what have we learned then? Uh, we've learned the bank has taken a very big decision, a uh, historically big decision as far as interest rates are concerned. It's doing it because they believe the situation is very grave. Let's have a look at what they have actually done today. They have increased interest rates by 0.5%. 75 percentage points. That is the biggest single increase over here by me in the very late 80s. There was a, uh, a one-day leap that was slightly bigger on Black Wednesday. It's the largest since the bank was granted independence. We can see over here. That has raised interest rates to 3% over at the far end. You can also see that stepping up there. That is eight consecutive leaps in interest, in, in interest rates, eight consecutive meetings. So the bank has been tightening interest rates all year. Why is it doing it? Well, it's doing it, as the bank governor made clear there in the press conference, because, in his words, inflation is too high, and you can see why. 10.1% is where inflation sits at the moment. It's been up there, it was above in July, dipped down below in August, but it's pretty stubbornly high, the highest since back over here. This is, again, the 1980s. Now, what's driving that, and what's, as we all know, is the energy crisis, began before the war in Ukraine, exacerbated by it. It's driven up inflation. You see, all of that is in the last year, and the bank's job is to drive that down to 2%. And so we heard the governor say they have no choice, effectively, but to act. He said that is... They do so. Very interesting to hear a central banker concerned with macroeconomic issues, very technical, technocratic, but in all his answers, certainly prefacing those remarks, about he understands what that will do to ordinary people facing a cost-of-living crisis. There's another issue that they talked about, which is important about looking into the future, is what does what they've said today mean about the path for interest rates beyond today? And let's have a look. These are the market expectations for interest rates. So this is what the money markets think will happen to interest rates at various points this year. If we go back to February, before the invasion, the, the lower of the light blue lines here, see, it comes into the middle of next year, end of next year, Markets thinking below 2%. Well, that didn't last long. We get to the summer and August. The energy crisis is in full flow. But still, the projection was that rates would be below 3%. Now, the mini budget in September, which was actually after the Bank of England last had a chance to comment on this and make a decision, that sent rates soaring, the projection. People thinking this is going to be above 6%. Now, that has fallen back somewhat, but the the bank saying today that they believe, despite the fact they've made this really big hike historically in interest rates, they actually think the market's overdoing that number and they think that rates might peak lower. So they will have to... They will rise more. We can expect further interest rate increases, but they won't peak as high. Now, we'll see what the market's reaction is to that news. One other thing, we haven't, got, we haven't had time yet to draw the line in here, but, look, we're looking in to July 23, October 2023. The bank is very clear. In August, they predicted a five-quarter recession, so that's a year and a bit. The bank today confirming it believes we are already in recession, and they expect the recession, albeit perhaps not as deep as previous recessions, to last all the way. That line would be drawn below, with GDP falling beyond you, into the first half of 2024. So an almost two-year recession predicted by the Bank of England. So while... There's some crumbs of good news about the path for interest rates and controlling inflation. These are very, very tough bits of information and tough news from the Bank of England.